So welcome everybody. And uh, this is our webinar on creating a culture of evangelism in your church. This is the uh, second time that we've hit this topic and it's popular both times. So hope you'll find a lot of uh, hands-on uh, practical ideas that you can implement. Uh, we welcome uh, Kevin Allen, the Western Region Director for Christianity Explored, and uh, Peter Kazusku, who's uh, the uh, Senior Associate Pastor at Countryside Community Church. And between these two guys, we're talking about decades of experience in helping churches in evangelism and running Christianity Explored. So they will be our primary uh, presenters. And uh, uh, now I want to turn it over to Lauren Welch, our uh, communication manager for Christianity Explored, for some uh, announcements and for prayer. Okay, I'm going to pray and then I'll hand it over to Kevin and we can begin. So. God, I thank you just for each and every person on this call. I thank you for the ministries that they're a part of and the passion for evangelism and for the loss that you've placed on their heart. I pray today that um, you would give Kevin and Peter and Alan just clarity to speak and wisdom um, and that people would just walk away feeling confident that we can share the gospel and we can make this something that churches get really excited about um, and very passionate about. Uh, so we thank you that we do all this in your strength and not our own. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. It is, again, uh, good to welcome you all. Do want to give a special welcome to Andy Dahlberg, who's joining us from Honolulu, because you came the furthest distance, um, and, uh, and that's pretty awesome, and got up at 8 a.m. So for those of you guys on Eastern Time, I know you're in prime nap mode right now. You know, Andy's probably having his coffee, some, probably some good Kona coffee out there. So welcome to all of you. Um, and uh, let me just encourage you. Um, this is our second time running this seminar. The first time through when we ran this, um, one of the things that the feedback that I got was there was a ton of information um, and they were politely saying, Kevin, you overdid it with information. And it was like drinking out of a fire hose. So if you um, are a glutton for information, you can go back to our YouTube site and watch that, uh, that webinar. However, this time we're going to try to simplify it and put this in broad categories and then give you some resources to follow up. Um, but with that in mind, let me encourage you, because this is a practical seminar, most of you are probably trying to figure out, okay, how do I and how do we as a church create an evangelistic culture in our church? most likely there's someone else at your church that you're going to want to share something thing with. So, you know, what we're trying to say is listen here as a river, the water's flowing from and through you to someone else, not as a reservoir where it just sticks with you. Um, we want to make sure you're passing this on to someone. You kind of know what it's like when you bring uh, maybe a non-Christian to church, how you listen differently. Well, I want you to listen differently and say, okay, who can we pass this on to? Who can, if there's one person in the church that I could pass one key piece of information, what would that be? So be thinking of that, we'll be asking you for um, your one next step. Now, um, as we are going forward on this, um, I want you all to start thinking about your own church context. You know your church context better than we do. Um, and so we're going to break up into groups of five or six. Um, we're going to trust you to self-appoint a leader. We think uh, you're, you're adults and you can do this. And if you don't want to be a leader, just say, not me. And let's point to somebody else. But um, in that, ask the question, what would an evangelistic culture in your church look like? And if uh, you get through that really quick and you need, um, you need something else to discuss, you could ask, uh, what is the greatest hindrance to getting there? And so um, if that's the case, um, or that, that is the case as we're going into this discussion, you have about six minutes, discuss this, we'll bring it back and get your feedback. Be prepared to be able to share one key insight or, or a couple key insights with the rest of us uh, when you get back from your groups. All right, Lauren is sending us off. Well, welcome back everyone. Um, do we have a, a couple of volunteers, two or three volunteers to summarize maybe what you came up with is what would an evangelistic culture in your church look like? Um, if someone said something profound or not profound, but just something that's true um, in your group and you said, this is worth sharing, um, please share, unmute yourself and, uh, 
and share with us one of the uh, several of those ideas. So, this is Larry Stapleton, and our group. A couple people mentioned that on uh, the area of prayer, that a, that a number of people in the congregation would be praying for unbelievers. Uh, that there would just the conversation about the loss would be a normal part of our conversation and uh, talk with one another. And then the importance of having relationships with unbelievers. That is fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so into the church. You're praying about it. You're concerned about it. You're thinking about it. You're, you're going to God as that is the, the great need. And, uh, and you're building those relationships. Awesome. All right. Who else? I'll speak for, for our group. Uh, I, what, what, well, I, I spoke on this, but uh, was saying that really we're, we're looking to have a, a good number of our people having uh, gospel conversations weekly uh, with the people that they rub shoulders with in different contexts. And they're excited about that. And they're, they're expecting God to work through that and, um, sharing that with the, the church and with the leaders and asking uh, for folks to be praying about that. Great. Thanks, Andy. I think what you're kind of describing there is that evangelism is more of a blessing than a burden as they're looking, they're, look, they're excited about those oh, conversations. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a joyous thing to be in, involved in. Absolutely. Good, good. One or two others. Keep, don't be afraid to, to speak up. This is a friendly group. Two things that came up in our group. One is that more and more people in the church feeling comfortable and equipped to reach out, building relationships in the neighborhood and uh, bringing people in, inviting them. Uh, and then along with that, a second item was that the church has an intentional pathway to move people from knowing nothing about the Lord to being growing disciples. Oh, very good. Let's do one more before we. Uh... What came up in our group was uh, a lot of talk around intentionality and keeping an eye out for unfamiliar faces and who show up to church and and sort of walking alongside them and because they, there could be things that are unfamiliar and and also being you know active in our local community so that people know that we're there. Uh, that's amazing. I love it. Intentionality. If there is one word I would love for all of us to take away from this, this time is what you're saying there, Scott, about intentionality, always having a next step, always uh, being ready. And hopefully we'll give you some ways to do that today. I think that uh, to sum up some of the things I bet we have, if you looked at all these groups together, as I have had these discussions in the past, basically we want to have environments where three things are always taking place. And I've, I, I over, uh, overdid PowerPoint last time, so I am in complete with, withdrawal on this. And so I'm moving to a whiteboard with three things written on it um, <laughs> in, in exchange for this. The first thing is, if I'm going to put this up here right, is a place where non and nominal Christians are, are converted. And by nominal Christians, you have many people in your church, oftentimes, who, although hearing the gospel from up front and maybe even in small groups, just haven't received. Christ yet, and they and they need a, a place to to process through that. Um, and so you have people in your own church, and a place for non Christians to actually you can bring them and and to be a part of that. Um, a place where um, where your the church folk um, can be awakened to the glory of the gospel. And then a place, and so that's where you you know we hear the description of people fall, like, caring about the gospel and wanting it to pray for it and to um, to talk to their neighbors about it. And then finally. Do you have avenues to actually train people in a, a method of evangelism that everyone can do, not just the professional evangelist? We don't all have to be Billy Graham. And so that's a summary. If those three, three things were taking place in your church, would that not excite you? And so now, obviously, we're partial here with Christianity Explored. I personally think it's perhaps the best tool to accomplish all three. But I want to, I don't want you to take my word for that. I'm going to bring on my good friend, uh, Peter Kazusko, who has years of experience of doing this and seeing this run um, at uh, Countryside Church in Sherwood, Oregon. So um, Peter, join us and, and give, give me a story 
uh, or tell us about how you've seen, um, you know, nominal and non-Christians um, put their faith in, in Jesus at Countryside. Yeah, well, thank you for uh, allowing me to share some of this. I'm uh, always looking forward to an opportunity to do that, to share at least what God has been doing in, in our midst. Um, I often say, you know, uh, when people ask me, uh, what do I do or what should, what should I do to help build a cultural evangelism in my church? Uh, I will say, well, I'll tell you what I do or what we're doing at our church. And so that's, that's what I'm going to be doing. So um, we have been using Christianity Explored for 15 years at our church, and we, we run it regularly, uh, two to three times a year. Um, to give lots of opportunity for non-Christians, non-believers, uh, and people who think they're Christians that are new to our church, uh, an opportunity to explore what we believe about the gospel. And Christian Explored has worked really well to do that. And we have had the privilege of seeing um, God bring non-believing people to faith in Christ. In fact, we, um, uh, Christian Explored North America has a blog and just recently posted two stories that are of people from our church. So we had somebody who was pretty anti-Christian, um, had to come home and care for her mom, and uh, she grew up in the church, walked away from it, and when she came to stay with her parents for two, three months, the first thing she said was, just so you know, I'm not going to church with you, but the first thing she did that first Sunday was get up and go to church. And it happened to be a Sunday when we were promoting Christian Explored. She jumped on the course and uh, about week seven of the 10 week course at that time, she gave her life to Christ. She, she saw a Jesus that she didn't know. And uh, she was blown away by him um, in, in ways that she never experienced or known before. And now she's a deeply committed Christian. Her story, I encourage you to read it. It's just wonderfully encouraging. And we also had somebody um, uh, who's also featured on, on the blog page, Dan Ellis, who was not a Christian, but it wasn't really hostile to Christianity, but very skeptical. And uh, he went on the course and uh, didn't become a Christian after it. But then two years later, uh, some stuff happened in his life that caused him to rethink uh, uh, the Christian faith and decided that it all, at, that, at least at that point, it made sense for him to turn to Christ to help him through his struggle. And uh, he, too, became a deeply committed Christian. And he's actually now one of our table leaders for our course. So it's wonderful to see that happen uh, through Christian Explored. And I, you know, there are multiple other stories I could tell you, but those are two that I really love to share and you could read about. I think one of the, um, I'd love you just to comment briefly on the fact that um, uh, the environment of Christian Explored allows for that to happen over a longer period of time. This is not a, like a one evening, you got 25 minutes to present the gospel, but uh, I once had a leader say, oh, I get it. I got seven weeks, two hours. I got 14 hours with this person. Yeah. Um, and what, what is the advantage of that in, in seeing people um, have a fresh look at Jesus? Well, I think for the, for the gal who was anti-Christian, uh, I think she definitely needed that period to really incubate and, and process and work through uh, all the stuff that she thought Christianity was about. But now in light of just a, a pure look at the person of Jesus, and it, it does take some time. Uh, but I think that's just true for most people. Uh, it's very rare that somebody just becomes a Christian after you share with them, um, you know, a simple outline of the gospel. They, they want to work through that. And, and it's actually beautiful to see that process at work in their life week after week after week. So, I mean, that's what we see with the disciples. You know, yeah. they're spending three years with Jesus and they're not getting it right away for a long time. And, but they're moving along, and then all of a sudden the light goes on. So I think that's a pretty common uh, experience for most people who become Christians. Great. And Lauren just posted both Joy's and Dan's um, stories, the link to them, on the blog. So uh, you can hear more about that and rejoice with uh, Peter. You can just see the smile on his face as he thinks of those people. And there's more. more. There's lots more. Um, now, shifting that 
Peter 2. The next is, what about those in the church who may not be quite awake? And maybe, I'm not sure if it'd, it'd be an exaggeration to call some people sleepy Christians who just are going to church. They do have faith in Christ, but it's, it's not as alive to them. How do you see Christian explored or, or presenting a gospel in this setting, um, awakening people like that? I think this is the more common experience, at least in our church. I, I think it, it's very common in churches in America. Uh, we, because Christianity has been a big part of our culture, um, there is, um, it's still a socially acceptable thing to call yourself a Christian in America. Um, I grew up in Canada and I didn't feel that way at all. I felt like, you know, there was a lot of disadvantage to say to anybody you're meeting for the first time that you're a Christian. Um, you'd get a pretty quick cold shoulder. So in our culture, there's a lot of, I think, nominal Christians, people who attend church. They think they're, they're, they think they're Christians and they jump on a Christian explore course and they discover, wow, this is not what I thought I believed. And all of a sudden the light is going on and they come alive in Christ truly for the first time. And uh, again, there is, uh, we did a video recording of someone in our church who I would say that's his story. Uh, we shared that, um, that video was shared at the uh, national conference that we had in June. Uh, he thought he was a Christian and he went on the course and realized he didn't understand the gospel. And he just got excited, absolutely excited about uh, the good news of Jesus Christ. And not long after that, he found himself wanting to be involved in Christianity Explored and was dropping hints of that to his table leader. And his table leader approached me and said, you really need to chase down Sean. I think he'd be a great leader. And yeah, he's become one of our most- So let me get this right. A guy who is not a Christian fell in love with the gospel and now is leading other people to Christ. Absolutely. Yes. So I think, I think he would have, he did say he was a Christian, but he didn't okay. quite understand the gospel. And that's, that was the, the issue that changed for him. Once he understood the gospel better, he just got excited about wanting to share it. And yes, that's what he does. By the way, that's that. And I, I agree, Peter, that that probably is the most common, um, aspect of Christian Explored in the U.S., and I think that's very helpful. I mean, if you think, if you can awaken the people in your church to the, to the wonder of the gospel, what an amazing thing that is. Okay, so now let's talk about how does, do you see um, a tool like this being used to equip and train people to share the gospel? And let me ask you, especially those who may not be the evangelist type, um, how have you seen that? Well, I think uh, with the, his name is Sean, the one who, who got all excited, thought he was a Christian and, and, um, and got excited about the gospel. Uh, this is someone who he would not at all consider himself uh, having the gift of evangelism. Uh, he just loves to be able to be at a table with somebody or with a group of people and just walk them through the gospel of Mark using Christianity Explored, asking questions, and allowing them to experience Jesus leaping off the pages of Scripture, and just facilitating that. And having done this over and over and over and over again over the years that he's been leading it, uh, he has developed an ability now to be able to talk about the, the message of Christ, who he is, what he's come to do, what it means to follow him. Uh, it's just something that now has become natural to him to be able to do that. Um, so he's, I would say he's able to communicate the gospel on his own, but he's also very, very capable of helping people uh, work through who Jesus is by going through um, the gospel of Mark. And I find that to be true with uh, anybody who becomes uh, a table leader in our church. They, uh, they learn how to be comfortable uh, opening the gospel of Mark with people that way and just letting the Holy Spirit work in their heart. So. Um, and that really is a, makes it yeah. very easy for, for people to learn how to use the gospel that way. Yeah, and that is the beautiful part is you're wanting people to explore and find Jesus for themselves mm -hmm. as, to, as opposed to you telling them all those, the point, uh, all those points. They get into the gospel, Mark. Uh, so one bonus question for you. Um, 
which I didn't tell you I was going to ask you. I, this is a surprise. You describe these different people, and I've I've met with a lot of those leaders um, at Countryside. We've gotten together, and one of the things that I come away with when I've when I've visited with you all is um, the the great joy there is among all of them, and that and how they enjoy spending time together. Talk about the, how that builds a team, uh, an environment like this, and and uh, the fellowship and the the joy of of having to not do this alone, because I think a lot of people in a church are saying, man, it's just up to me. Um, describe that, the, the fellowship. Well, I think uh, for the most part, it just naturally happens. People who love the gospel so much and want to share it, love to hang around with people who also share that same experience. Um, I mean, one principle that I've encouraged people uh, to consider when I take them through some kind of evangelism training that I provide is, is hang around with evangelistic people. They will energize you. They will, they will draw you into this work more and more. And then you just want to be together with them and uh, do the ministry with them and talk about how we can, how we can expand this work to the whole congregation. And my hope is, and what I've seen of, over the years at countryside is that, that organic approach, just working with the people who are excited, wanting to spread it over time, will be um, contagious. And more and more in the congregation will, will catch that enthusiasm and want to be a part of that work team. So. It is, it's kind of fun being around people that are like that, are joyful, other-centered, so and, and love of Jesus. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, thank you. Well, Peter's going to hang around. We're not kicking him off. Because uh, in 15 minutes here, we're going to go to a time of Q&A, and you guys can ask uh, Peter if you want to direct questions to him. Um, feel free to do that. I do want to go through a few um, principles um, before we get there, just some practical ways of how you build an evangelistic culture in your church, specifically using um, Christianity Explored. And, um, and I want to do this in, um, in, in three ways, and that, first of all, um, one uh, one very practical um, level or thing to bring out is, which is already brought up, is this is in our in our very methodology of Christianity explored. It's spending time in prayer, as well as in our um, in our message of this is takes God to open up blind eyes. We've got to be men and women of prayer, and if that is the case, that's the most important part of the evening. Um, and so one thing you may not realize in, um, in your Christian explored schedule is it is, there's actually a half hour dedicated before the guests arrive for your leaders to gather as best possible and pray. And we used to find in Colorado, um, that is the most precious and important part of the evening because you're gathering together, you're seeking God, and it really helps you realign and realize it's not up to me. Um, I don't, I, I can't make anyone come to faith in Christ, and so therefore the pressure's off. And as I'm going to the Lord, um, it's kind of a release, um, and it's an awesome opportunity for us to pray for one another. So pray desperate prayers. And what I mean by that is pray prayers that you can't answer yourself um, or that others in the church can't answer, but it requires God to do. And so pray prayers for your church. If you feel like, okay, then I don't see there's anyone else out there. Um, I'm in this alone. Pray that God will bring one person alongside of you. Um, but the first major category there is pray desperate prayers. Um, the second one, and this is the second major category here, is to have a long view of, uh, of what you're trying to accomplish. We're talking about building a culture in your church. Cultures are developed over time. Um, it was kind of funny. My son is... Uh, a student at the University of Colorado. And for years, obviously, Colorado's main rival, at least in their mind, was the University of Nebraska. And when the Colorado changed football conferences, the, the Pac-12 tried to say, okay, your rival now is Utah. And my son would say, no, they're not. We have no culture with them. We have no, there's no history of a rivalry. So as much as someone would like to try to press on a culture until there's history, it doesn't take place. The point there is, this is going to take time. Let me just briefly tell you about my story at, uh, at Village 7 in Colorado Springs, our church there. Um, for the first four or five years that we were running Christian Explored, starting in 2002, 
we hardly had any um, unbelievers take the course. And we had about four or five people take the course every time we, we did it. It was not large. It was tiny. But we were trying to build a culture. And we were trying to do training and equip people. And so you have to have the long view. Um, you have to expect disappointment. You expect people that you invite to, to that you want to come. Don't. You see people leave the course after a couple weeks. Um, expect delay. Sometimes it takes people coming through the series uh, three or four or five times before they see Jesus for who he is. But then you will see dramatic results because the gospel is powerful and, and God is faithful. And it's up to God, not to us. So if we keep those two things in mind, um, that allows you to have a long view. And let's apply that then in three practical ways. Um, the first one is uh, before you begin the course, before you even would start a Christian export, as you're building the culture in your church, do a few things. First of all, um, remind yourself often of those expectations, that, it's, that Rome is not built overnight, um, that you can expect disappointment, delay, and dramatic results, and remind yourself and have others remind you of that. So if you can find one other person and say, hey, will you remind me of this a couple of times um, over the next few months, I need you just to remind me. And then maybe that's your takeaway. Um, then secondly, train your people in the message and methodology of Christianity Explored or whatever tool you're using. Train your people. We like to say the best methodology or the best spontaneity is, is rehearsed. Um, and we will, we'd all love to be spontaneous in our evangelism. One of the things I have found is just by going through Christianity Explored time after time, I'm, I'm much more comfortable with it. Um, so you want to train your people to be comfortable. Um, it looks easy, um, but it may be harder than you think, and you need that training. That's very helpful. Train your people, and I think we had a, was it, maybe it was Andy earlier on, um, who said um, you want to see people in your church reaching people one-to-one. -one. You want to see people out engaging people wherever they're at. Um, you need to train your people to do work, even if that means just starting spiritual conversations and getting to that place where they can say, will you look at the Bible with me? Would you like to look at the Bible? And then, you know, even if they do nothing else, they can invite them on um, a Christian Explored course. So prepare those things um, beforehand. A couple of practical um, pieces. Um, always think, how can I replace myself in the role that I'm doing the next time through. So if the first time I'm running Christian Explored, I'm a table leader, the next time through say, okay, who can be a table leader instead of me so that I can fulfill another needed role? Maybe I need to train more people. Or, um, you know, if, if I'm the big facilitator, how, who can else can I equip to take that role? Uh, so think through that. Um, what part of the church can I invite to witness Christian Explored? One of the things I think this could be the key thing in building an evangelistic culture in your church is don't limit Christianity Explored to non-Christians. You want to feel free to invite your entire congregation because they're not going to invite their non-Christian friends until they've gone through it and they understand it and they fall in love with it, even as Peter described that story. Now, that said, major caveat you want to quarantine, and we're good, you're good with that word now. Everyone all know what that means. We're going to quarantine the Christians, the well-meaning Christians, from the non-Christians in that if they haven't gone through the training and they don't understand that this is an evangelistic study, you want to put them at separate tables so that those who are working with the non-Christians can help and ask good questions and can be intentional about working with them. And then you have your Christians that you're equipping and training and you have, um, you're, maybe you're at that table saying, hey, let me tell you what's going on here. Here's how you could be a good table leader. So think, always think about what part of the church can I invite alongside with me? Then also recruit people on the, on the sides. Recruit people to be cooks, to be table leaders, to be book table managers. Find ways for people to plug in, and they will find more comfort along those lines. We had a lady in Colorado, her name was Kathy, who for years would, would do the salad. She brought the salads in year after year, and probably after five or six years, she said, you know what, I think I'd like to be a table leader. Her entry into 
wanting to be trained and equipped to share the gospel was getting lettuce from Costco. Um, it's amazing how that one little step. So always think through with individuals in your church, how can I take them to the next step? I'm going to bring Peter back on this one. Um, Peter, you and I have talked about um, you're always trying to identify people in your church. Um, how do you describe that? You have an Australian term you like to use, but uh, what, what's the person you're looking for in the church? Yeah, I got this from uh, some of my Australian friends. They um, they call them blokes worth watching. The only problem with that is that's just uh, men. <laughs> so, blokettes? Uh, is there a blokettes? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what are they in Australia? Uh, glasses, Sheila. Aren't they? Sheila's. Sheila's, that's it, Sheila's. Uh, no, people worth watching is uh, the more universal. But there is there is kind of a Canadian Australian word you can use too. It's uh, a keener. Keeners are um, folks that are eager to learn, and the ones that sit at the front row um, just really stand out. So I'm always looking for people like that in in, um, in our congregation. One of the privileges I have as as an associate pastor in the church is I can spend more time getting to know the people that are part of our congregation or new to our congregation, especially. And uh, you can discover pretty quickly which ones are just really going to stand out. And, and every once in a while, they'll approach you. So one of my best leaders, his name is Callan, he's mentioned in both of these uh, uh, stories, he, he, he approached me. He chased me down and wanted to spend time with me. He was so hungry, so eager as a new Christian to grow that uh, that was an easy one. And uh, I, I spent a couple years just discipling him one-to-one, -one, what I would call doing a deep work in the lives of a few people who then eventually become people who do the same kind of thing with others. And so, Very good. And yeah. hopefully over time, the long view – you'll you'll see exponential growth from those people that you have done that you've invested deeply in so run with those who are running um yeah. it's like yeah. trying to get people to go who are at a, uh, standing still as much harder if they're moving move with them so we move from um before you begin to during the course another just some practical notes here the first thing is make use of the christian export resources our leader site we'd love to help you with that um, we have other great resources uh, we want to give out today to anyone um, who you know, fills out the survey. We're going to, on the top of some coaching, a couple of documents we'd like to send you. One is how there's a place for everyone in Christianity Explored. So you can think through, okay, how can I plug someone in? And then secondly, your next step or your first next step. Um, and so this will help you think, okay, if there's one way to, to get going, here, here's some practical ways. So we have resources. So during the course, make use of resources like those, like um, like before and after surveys. Make sure you're surveying the people who come to the course before and after to find out where they are in regards to who Jesus is, why he came, and what it means to follow him. Um, and then secondly, always take stock at who has shown up to your course. I know a lot of times you might get there and you might say, oh, these are not the people I had hoped. But God has brought the people he wants to be there, take stock of them, and then adjust accordingly. Let me give you an example of this. I'm, we're, we're going through a Life Explored um, series um, out of All Souls Church in London right now. We're sampling the next version, as Alan um, indicated. And in, in my group there, um, not, it's not my group, actually, in this group I'm a part of, the leaders are Jonathan and Helen Rogers. And this couple from All Souls Church in London are the most fantastic table leaders. Um, they are amazing. And so halfway through our first session, as they determined that everyone in our group are Christians, they made a 90 degree turn in how they led their meeting. Instead of assuming and adjusting the questions to us as non-Christians, they said, okay, I'm going to use this time to train the six of you into using Life Explored. That was brilliant. That was brilliant. So take stock in who you do have show up and then say, okay, what can I do? What's the best use of my time with those that God has given me? Okay. One more thing after the course, what are some things that you can do to, um, to make sure and to, to build this culture of evangelism? The first thing is celebrate people, 
Celebrate the people that have come. Celebrate your table leaders. Um, tell them how valuable they are to you, but also to what you're seeing built up as a culture of evangelism. Make sure that you spend time with them. It, it, we enjoyed in Colorado spending so much time with our table leaders. I actually thought initially that I was going to have to build two different sets of table leaders, one for the spring and one for the fall to give people a break. We ended up finding out that our table leaders loved doing this so often that I couldn't get them not to do it. Um, and, but celebrate them, spend time with them, have a party afterwards. Um, and along those lines, as you are celebrating after the course, even if it was a, a small course, even if it's just your team showing up, it's okay to be small for a long time as long as you are intentional about what is that next step. It's okay, and don't compare yourself to other churches. Just be intentional about your next step. Um, a dear friend of mine, Dave Hampton, likes to describe the real success in a ministry like Christianity Explored. And he says, the real success in Christianity Explored is the development of your table leaders over four to five years. Because what you end up seeing is their giftedness and, and the, the maturity of the ministry grows as they grow. So build into your people. Okay, one more final area before we go to discussion, and that is the area of you all need to count the cost. We all need to count the cost in regards to um, running a, a Christianity Explored or doing evangelism in your church. Um, you need to be able to, along those lines, take stock of the time, the talent, and the treasures that your people have and your congregation has and said, are, am I willing to invest those three things in the area of evangelism? So along those lines, in the area of, uh, of um, talent, are you willing to invest in training? Um, this won't happen if you just open up the box and say, hit play, in the, on, on play, play on the DVD without actually reading through some of the stuff ahead of time and being equipped. Um, and we want to help you in that area. Uh, as, as Peter said, you want to run with those who run, bring people beside you. Um, in the area of time, be, uh, be, uh, go above board in trying to secure the times on the church ca calendar. Um, we know it's difficult. The church calendar is always a place to battle. If you can fight for a time in the fall and the spring or, or maybe three times during the year, and say, hey, this is a priority for us as a church, and we are gonna run Christianity Explored or Life Explored or whatever series we're gonna do, that helps protect and get your, your church on the same page. One thing about doing it as a church, you're, you're, you're putting the issue of evangelism front and center. Um, in building a culture of evangelism, and the key things um, one author has said is that you want to have evangelism front and center in front of your church every 30 days. Well, we can help you do that because you're, you're either celebrating a course that just finished or you're looking forward to the one that's coming. You're constantly putting this before and giving people a place to be involved. So that's the issue of calendar. You need to protect your calendar and make sure the, the busy things and the good things don't overcome the best things. Um, and then finally, um, in kind of the cost, I would say provide a meal. Um, this should be, I think, a non-negotiable. Um, people love hanging out. Uh, people love to come to a meal. Now, I know we can't do this right now because of COVID, but as you're building this environment, um, people love hanging out and visiting when you have food in front of them. Also, the antagonism towards the gospel tends to go way down. It's hard to be angry with someone um, you're sh sharing a meal with. Um, be willing to invest in that. It might cost your church, probably the biggest investment is going to be your meal. Be willing to do that. One thing I began to realize, um, I found, and this is kind of an in interesting, strange illustration, but I found that a couple of years, we had people that absolutely loved a certain type of iced tea that was a little bit more expensive than, than what I had been, been giving for other drinks um, during the meal. And so we realized, well, you know what? This is something that they find valuable. They love. They were raving about at their tables. So I wanted to make sure I provided that as, as just something that would say, hey, this evening is special. You're trying to set that apart. So from before the course, during the course, and after the course, you want to make this the most exciting night of their week. Um, and the, the participants are going to feel valued. 
The table leaders are going to feel energized because they're with those around them. And, um, and you're going to be doing this together. So that there are just some um, general, um, some quick ways of building an evangelistic culture. We do want to get to where you're, you have questions. And so um, I'm going to let Lauren read the questions and direct them to, to, my, to me, to, to Peter, to Alan, or, um, or to herself. So. Okay. Um, so we've got one. Says from Cross Crossbridge Kids, but I'm pretty sure that's Sally, right? <laughs> I thought that was Sally. Yeah. Um, she asked, and I think I might direct this at Peter since the rest of us are CE staff, and I don't want to sound biased. She asks, I'd love to hear specifically how churches. Oh, sorry, somebody submitted a question. It went away. Speci I'd like to hear specifically how churches get a CE course started at their church. So maybe Peter, what did that look like for you guys? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a great question. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering that. Uh, I'll tell you what I did. Um, I shared the course with um, the chairman of our leadership team at the time, who fortunately I was uh, developing a really good, wonderful, positive relationship with. And for me, that was really helpful in persuading uh, the, the lead pastor, the senior pastor, and other other key players, leaders in the church, Stockholm, um, uh, uh, what's the word that people use for the key players in your church? Um, stakeholders, that's it. So uh, that's that worked well for me. And um, my thought is that, that that is kind of the best way to go. Uh, you want to get exposure of Christian Explore to your leaders. If you can't get your senior pastor, obviously that's the first place you'd like to try um, but if you're a lay person, work, work through your, your leadership base. I think that's probably the best way and get them excited about it and let them become your advocates for running the course. So, uh, if you're an associate pastor like me, there, there's a little bit of an advantage to also promoting it for the whole congregation once you've been given that green light to do that. Um, but if you're not in that position, I would just leverage your, your key leadership in the church. I love to give out Rico Tice's book, Honest Evangelism, to these key leaders, these stakeholders, um, the elders or deacons in your church, the pastors. Um, it's a very um, accessible, easy read, and it helps get them a, a vision for what can happen. And um, I think that vision is key. That's a great question, though. Okay, uh, Larry Stapleton asks a question, but I think I'm going to answer this because everyone might have some form of this question. Um, he said that he shared CE with a pastor at his church. And is there someone that that pastor can contact to discuss questions he may have? Absolutely. Any of us here that work at CE, you can talk to and actually on the feedback form, which I'll put a link to, we have a checkbox that says, do you want a coaching call um, with Kevin or Alan to discuss this? And a coaching call is just a fancy way of saying a call that you can ask all your questions and figure out what that next step is. So definitely take advantage of that and feel free to share it with literally anyone in your church. I don't think I'm going to speak out of turn for Kevin and Alan, but they would love to talk to anyone. So um, I'm going to move on to another question. So Peter Crossley asks, and I think Alan, I'm going to direct this at you because I think you have some experience with this. Does anyone on our call or at CE have experience with using Christianity Explored completely outside of the church, out in the community, either physical or virtual? The place where I've run it most often is with an international student ministry here in uh, Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, there is way more international students, at least there were before uh, COVID in uh, Greenville, South Carolina than I think most people here realize, but uh, find that they're very uh, open to uh, discussing, particularly when you caught, uh, couple it with a meal and spending a lot of time in fellowship. So we've had a ministry here that I volunteer with that's been going for more than 10 years, although it's really kind of backtracking a little bit with uh, COVID and less international students coming. But uh, we have something called Friday International Supper and Hospitality. So we spend a lot of time just getting to know the students, having a meal together, and then they're very open to uh, discussing the gospel. So uh, on several occasions, we've uh, gone through Christianity Explorer. We've had Iranian, Indian, Chinese, 
uh, Hispanic, a variety of different uh, uh, cultures uh, present. Uh, and that meets in a home, as I said. Another experience I've had, this was a once off, we ran it in the YMCA here, and the YMCA had agreed for us to run it April of this year, but that got shut down by uh, COVID. Uh, I think Peter has some experience running it in a YMCA. Uh, I can also say a, a friend of mine has run it in a, a retail store after hours, uh, you know, clearing some of the uh, furniture out of the front of the store and running it right there. But Peter, what was your experience running it in a YMCA? Yeah, we did that for a number of years and the intent behind that was to have a neutral location, a non-church location for anybody who might be allergic to church. Uh, it just so happens that's where uh, Dan Ellis, who is one of the uh, people I talked about, that's where he learned about Christianity, took the course. And he actually really appreciated that um, because he hadn't really been attending our church. So it's a, it's a great location. I was hoping that the YMCA location would actually draw people from the YMCA, but we really didn't have uh, maybe one or two people um, where that happened. But I think it's a great neutral place, and there uh, it's YMCA. Many YMCs are certainly open to that. So I also I use it one on one with people. I'll you know I'll meet at my home at a coffee shop now online. Uh, you know, there's, you can use Christianity Explored one-to-one -one, uh, a lot. It's a really great resource for that. And you can do also, that anywhere. Yeah, and also right now, obviously with COVID or, and maybe even afterwards, um, you know, we're seeing a lot of people run it by Zoom. We're running it on Zoom on Thursday nights. I, I am with our church um, and we have some a couple going through that. I'm meeting up an individual um, to go through it one-to-one -one in a coffee shop right now. I've also known in Colorado Springs, the Life Network uh, Pregnancy Center is using it uh, in their setting. Um, the campus ministries use it in that setting. So it's mm -hmm. extremely flexible um, in, in those different settings. So um, there, yeah, there's no reason that's, that you can't, but uh, let's get to some other questions. So can, can I just mention from a like Canadian context there, am I okay just to jump in a little bit? There? Yeah, absolutely, please do. Uh, and I, I think Peter mentioned that it's very different in Canada. I think it is. Uh, from, from the states, um, we, we've, uh, what we've done is a lot of the table leaders who come to our on sort of church uh, based meeting in our building, um, we've then, uh, the, we, they, the, we've encouraged them to think about running it in their homes with their neighbors and, uh, and friends. So kind of running it as a bit of a training really for them to then go off and, and do Christianity Explored uh, in their homes with their neighbors or friends, family. And uh, that's been really, really good. So I, we've had some folks who have said, hey, I'd like to just jump in and do it at home. We've actually asked them to come along to a church-based Christianity Explored first, be a table host um, and, uh, and, and receive some training. Uh, I'll hands up I'm not the best trainer here in, in terms of doing that but but uh, um, it's usually one evening before <laughs> but uh, we we've really seen people say hey I want to do this in our homes and um, actually our senior pastor has been running it with a Muslim couple that uh, they've, they've become friends with so it's that excellent. has a kind of contagious thing to it as as well so I, I think that's a way to get it into the community oh, that is because people are less inclined to come into our church building and, uh, and, and do it. But I love that. And I love the fact that you're running it in the church um, as a training um, place. You're constantly putting it before your people. That is excellent, Andy. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. John dropped a comment in here too, that I should mention. He said prison ministry. John is our Canadian director too, actually. So our Canada contacts can put you in touch with John Kibble. Um, yeah. Pr correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin, but prison fellowship international, I think uses an adapted version of Christianity explored in prisons. Um, yes, not in the so, United States. Not in the U.S. Across, and and yeah. across Canada and the rest of the world. So. Right, but that kind of goes to illustrate that. I mean, you really can use it in a lot of different contexts, and I think particularly yes. with COVID, we're going to be seeing that more and more because we're not going to be in churches as much or in larger groups. Right. Um, so time is drawing to a close. I know we said we'd end at three. So Kevin, I think we should do closing announcements. But if people want to stay on. Possibly for questions. We, we'd love to answer questions. So yeah, we'll be here as long as you want, but we understand that, you know, 
time and stuff. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ahead. So we want to move to uh, 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 closing uh, announcements. Uh, just a reminder of a couple of upcoming events that we uh, do not have definite dates assigned to yet. But later this month or beginning of November, we're going to have a webinar on uh, Christmas outreach and evangelism. So be looking for that. We're seeking to bring in an outside uh, speaker for that particularly. And then uh, uh, we plan to do uh, an online trial version of the new version of Life Explorer starting in January. So stay tuned for more information about that. We're quite excited you know, uh, to the, for the revision to Life Explorer as it's going to uh, uh, look more specifically at the story of God as seen throughout the Bible and how that interacts with our personal story. And particularly as we are naturally worshipers, but we often worship and serve other things instead. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, there will be a feedback form that's uh, posted in the uh, chat, but also uh, Lauren will be sending a, a follow-up email as well uh, with uh, the feedback form. And there's a couple of things you can get from the feedback form, the resources that Kevin mentioned earlier. And also you'll be able to sign up for a coaching call uh, with either Kevin or me uh, afterwards. And I think one question was, you know, the pastor of the church was particularly interested, and I gather the pastor wasn't on the call. You can also try to set up a coaching call for uh, somebody else in your church that might be a more appropriate, if that's uh, helpful. Uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, Peter for joining us, and uh, Kevin, as always, for leading us. And uh, I want to thank all of you for coming and giving up an hour of your precious time. We will, in a minute, draw the webinar to a close, but we will stay on board afterwards if anybody's got any overtime questions that they would uh, like to address. And then a final uh, reminder, you might not realize it, but uh, Christianity Explored is mostly a donor-supported ministry. We do have... Uh, you know, some slight income from uh, 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 royalties for selling resources, but we try to keep those costs very low. So please consider uh, uh, donating to the ministry. And you can go to our website, uh, uh, christianityexplored.us and uh, forward slash donate. And uh, uh, you know, consider doing that. Again, want to thank you very much for coming. And now let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the people that have uh, given their time, and I pray for their churches, and pray, Lord, that each person could take at least one takeaway from this and have a next step that they can implement as a result. And we pray that our time together this afternoon has been pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I just want to say, I think I might be sending the wrong link for the feedback form, but I will send the right one in an email. <laughs> so if the chat box didn't work, don't worry about it. I'll send it shortly in an email. So sorry about that. Okay, thank you. Looks like we got a hand up from uh, Mike. Oh, okay. I was just that was, was that's a clapping. That was clapping. That was a clapping. <laughs> he, was, okay. he was giving us applause. Thank you. We'll take yeah. those. Okay. Thank are, are there any more questions? Are there any more questions in the chat, or you can just unmute yourself and feel free to ask questions live if you have any. I have a question. Yeah. I have a question for Alan. As far uh, as doing Christianity Explored with internationals, did you use the uh, little booklet that's made specifically for internationals, and did you use the videos with with it? Uh, we did use, that's called the universal edition that you're talking about. Uh -huh. We did use the, inter, the universal edition, which is set up as more of a Bible study, and it looks at fewer passages of scripture, so it is good for internationals. Uh, we did follow up with the, uh, with the video, so we had the discussion, and then we said we're going to summarize with a short video except the uh, last time we did it, uh, 
uh, I think the particular group we had, uh, after a couple of times, we realized that the video wasn't really working with them. So we weren't committed to keep doing the video just because we'd done it before and it had worked. Uh, but most of the times that we run it, we did the study as outlined in the Universal Edition then followed up with the video. And then we would use either the English subtitles, because all the international students, you know, are pretty good in English, but still, for most of them, English is a second language. So having them have a chance to read, you know, the, the captions on the video could help, except in a couple of cases where we had a predominant of a particular language group, then we would use the subtitles for that language group off the video. Okay, well, the experience I had was uh, one friend, I was using, going to use the videos, I showed it and she said, it's just what, talking way too fast. So she, I sent the videos home with her because we weren't going to use them together and she watched them, I don't know, a couple of times at her own home where she could you know, take more time with it. And I did use the international uh, workbook, but I'm just curious if other people, if I'm more, um, tend to do things chronologically, like read through the Gospel of Mark. And then when I did this booklet, I realized we're jumping back and forth, just kind of picking and choosing passages. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. It's not a chronological uh, right. Yeah. Cr yeah. Christianity Explored is designed to answer three big questions. The first question is, who is Jesus? That's weeks one and two. And then uh, uh, what was his mission? Why did he come? That's weeks three, four, and five. And then the final question is, what does he call us to do in response? And then the universal edition, that's weeks six, seven, and eight. Uh, so you can encourage people to read through chronological at home, but one thing I would say that's not always good with Asian students because they hear that as homework, and sometimes, you know, they're going to be very intimidated by that because they think they've got to do it, and they might decide to stop coming because they know they're not going to do the homework. So I'm not sure that the uh, reading chronologically at home works as well with all international. But Christian Explored is designed to you go through it, answering those questions during the actual session, but you encourage people to read through, uh, straight through at home during the uh, weeks of the course. So would you recommend after that course is over, starting back again and going through Mark together to get a, <clears throat> more, a, a fuller picture of what Jesus did in his life? Yeah, that could be a good approach if you've got, you know, that kind of access and time with the internationals, you know, to go through it, to answer those three big questions, and then go back through the book. I think a key with internationals, a lot of cultures are much more relational than the U.S. Uh, culture. And it's really important to spend the time uh, cultivating the relationships on the front end before going into then the presentation through Christianity Explored or what other kind of gospel uh, approach you do. Just investing the time in a relationship is key. Mm -hmm. Can I add a little bit? I've done some work too with international students in Christianity Explored and on the video, what I what I discovered is that they, they prefer the English subtitles rather than their Mandarin or Cantonese because they're learning English and, it's, yeah. and as they're hearing it in English, it helps them to connect with what they're hearing with the words. So you might want to consider that or at least ask them if that would be better for them. Mm -hmm. Good, any other question? Wow. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you have more, the uh, opportunity, obviously, with coaching is ongoing. It is not limited to this webinar. I know we make it sound that way, but uh, feel free to contact us whenever. We'd love to help you. Always take a next step. We'd love to know where you're at and help you take that next one. So if there's no more questions, we'll just uh, thank you for coming and uh, love to connect down the road. So please, uh, please stay in touch. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.